So now we will discuss the lectures on the fourth module of the course on advanced marine structures. Just for summary let us quickly see in module 1 we discussed about the design aspects broadly where we said there are different limit states ultimate limit states. We also discussed about the plastic analysis and design. We did some examples to understand how to compute the plastic hinge length for a given problem and we discussed both the theorems lower bound and upper bound theorem to find out the true collapse load for a given structural system. Then we understood that the whole plastic analysis and design circumscribes around yield value of the stress, but again finding out the yield value of the yield point in a given failure phenomena is again complex. So, we understood some basics about theories of failure and we see uh, saw there are a lot of discrepancies between the different theories of failure at least in the second and fourth quadrant because there are some theories says even though the stress has reached the yield point failure does not occur. Okay. So, there are some discrepancies and controversies which we understood. Then we spoke something about an important parameter called shear center and how to evaluate this and what is the necessity of an importance of this in advanced design philosophies applied to marine structures. Then we also discuss about some fundamentals of impact analysis. cost by vessels and ships on marine structures that is what broadly we discussed in module 1. In module 2 we focused on hydrodynamic aspects in the structural engineering perspective we essentially discussed about flow through members, we discussed about flow induced vibrations and the effect of vortex shedding on the structural response and how to control vortex induced vibration or responses caused by VAV by different design techniques we also discuss in detail flow through perforated members. And we did interestingly a problem where we discussed experimental analytical and numerical study of flow through perforated members. And we also discussed a very interesting case example as applied to one of the complaint structures like a tension leg platform. In module 3, we introduced reliability theory we said what is the necessity or importance of of reliability theory or reliability analysis in marine structures what are the different kinds of uncertainties and how the reliability based design can be invoked in marine structures. And what are the different recent techniques and levels of reliability and their application problems using for example, like Hassofer Lind method. 
So, this module gave a very brief introduction of reliability theory and application of this reliability theory and of course, the limitations. of reliability based design in marine structures, we discuss this in detail. Lastly and finally, in the fourth module, we will talk about fracture and fatigue. Fatigue failure cumulative damage fatigue damage models and fatigue assessment analysis and design of marine structures. This should be the focus of this specific module, which will intend to cover in about 5 to 6 lectures. We have covered this module in about 32 lectures, this module in about 7 lectures and this module in about 8 lectures. So, totally we will cover the whole course in about 52 to 53 lectures. If you have any questions on module 1, module 2 and module 3, kindly post it to me at NPTEL IIT Madras. You can see the website ID. If you have any questions, you can post to me. You will also have an access to a different set of question papers, which will be available at different levels of the modules on different topics, which will be available and uploaded in the NPTEL website on this course. So, kindly look at these test papers and try to solve them. I have given list of references in the website of NPTEL for this particular course. Try to acquire all these original references and read them in detail to enhance your knowledge, because most of the segments, most of the sections you can see, we are touching only upon the conceptual ideas. It is not in covered in detail, because in this particular course, in the given time domain of about 52 to 53 lectures this is the maximum what we can expect it to do, because the syllabus coverage is very vast as far as this particular topic is concerned. Of course, each one of them qualifies for an independent course of about 40 lectures, but it is very difficult to cover all of them in detail in a given course topic advanced marine structures. So, and in fact design is again an area where you can have two level courses separately advanced design and fundamental design or preliminary design. So, the idea of bridging all these points of discussion in one course titled advanced many structures is to give a feeling that the advancement term is not related to any new form of marine structure alone, but there are different techniques which has been looked into in this particular concept. and so on. So, this is where our focus areas were remaining and we tried to cover them in detail. So, that I wish that you must undergo all these courses or all these topics given in each module in detail. If you have a difficulty you should always write to me, so that we can have an external support extended to you to make you to understand the fundamentals more clear. Now, let us look into the lectures on fourth module, where we will talk about fatigue and fracture. It is one of the important segment where <coughs> fatigue based design is becoming a necessity for marine structures. First we look at the necessity why fatigue is important in marine structures, how fatigue and fracture are different. Now, we can write a statement here saying <coughs> fatigue design of marine structures are important.
when your description of long term variation of local stresses are focused. Now, in any structure or structural system, when the long term variation of the local stresses is very important, constant members becomes a focus, then one must do fatigue design. Now, one can successfully ask a question immediately, what would be those responsible forces which can cause long term variation of local stresses. Okay? So, long term variation of local stresses are generally caused by environmental loads predominantly waves, <coughs> wind is also responsible, but offshore structure the submerged volume of members is far higher compared to that of the projected area of the members in wind exposed sector. So, one can say that predominantly in marine structures these are essentially caused by waves. The moment we say waves, we have already understood what are the different variables associated with the wave action or wave force prediction, the direction, wave height, wave amplitude, wave spectra, then wave theories. There are many things which you discussed in module 1 and module 2. I think you can get back to these modules later to understand how do we say what are the variables associated with waves or prediction of forces from wave action. So, once you look at the long term variation of these caused by these forces and this variation are not caused on the members as forces, but what I am looking is looking at is the action of these forces on the members at local level that is very very important. Generally you could look at the design, people look at the design as a perspective in global level. So, they want to find out the response of the global structure at the global level, but fatigue design is a micro focus of understanding the design at the local level of the members. So, for example, we are not looking at the design of the members, we may look at the design of joints of the members. So, it is one can say it is a micro level design, much detailed design and this design if done properly, your failure phenomena, probability of failure, reliability of structures all can be addressed more effectively. Okay? So, it is very important that fatigue based design or long term variation of local stresses are focused in the design which are essentially caused by wave action in marine structural members. Having said this, main contribution of fatigue damage if you look at the main contribution. of fatigue damage, it essentially comes from let us say frequently occurring load effects, <coughs> it essentially comes from frequently occurring load effects the load effects are frequently occurring, which are in the order of ten to twenty percent of that of the effects caused by the extreme loads during the service life. This statement is very important to understand the importance of fatigue design in marine structures. 
Let us read the statement slightly in a different manner. Let us say I am able to estimate the load effects or the effects cost with the extreme loads. I am able to estimate the effects cost with the extreme loads during the service life of the structure. Let us say I give a number to this effect on a 10 point scale. Let us say the effect is 9 on a 10 point scale. Which is nothing but the effects caused by extreme loads. And we all agree and understand that the occurrence of extreme loads or the probability of occurrence of extreme loads during the service life of the structure is only 5 percent because characteristic load is 95 percent you are taking in the design and the variation can occur only 5 percent. <coughs> But if at all that occurs, then the effect caused by these loads on the structural member is very serious because it is 9 on a 10 point scale, it is very very consequence, the consequence of the damage is very very high. This is one part of the one of the loading which essentially affects the strength of the member. There is another dimension of understanding this. Now, let us look at other type of loads which are frequently occurring. So, they are not extreme loads. So, they are frequently occurring. Let us look at the other set of loads which are frequently occurring. Okay. Frequently, okay. frequent load effects let us say. They are occurring very frequently. Therefore, they are not extreme loads and they will not affect the strength of the member because only 10 to 20 percent of the effect of this is seen. Okay? Only 10 to 20 percent of the effect of this is seen on the members, okay? but it is important because they are occurring due to cyclic effects. So, what I mean to say is the magnitude which is causing the frequent load effects though it is not important the focus is how many number of times it occurs as a cycle on a given member okay, that is the focus here. So, if you look only the effect of this it may not be comparable to the effects caused by the extreme loads on the member. So, one can design and think of designing the structural member for this kind of high amplitude non occurring non frequent effects thinking that your member is made stronger. But your design can become a failure if you do not address frequently occurring load effects which has only effect of 20 percent of the high magnitude value what you have calculated in the design, but it can cause a failure. So, fatigue that way is very important. Okay. So, one can look at the stress ranges and the number of cycles at which this stress range is occurring on the member and that value of the stress range may not be challenging to the strength of the member at all. Okay. The value may not reach yield value, okay. it may not be challenging to the strength of the member or the material because the effect is considered only 20 percent, but still it can cause a significant damage. Okay. So, that is the important focus here. Can you give me another example of low magnitude long term impact on materials similar to fatigue may not be cyclic. What I am asking is similar to fatigue low magnitude, but long term effect creep okay. that is another example creep especially in concrete is a very important targeted value where the amplitude causing creep may be very low, but the effect is on a long term effect on the material okay. may not be cyclic. Now, why one worries about fatigue failure? I mean what is the 
speciality about the fatigue failure why one is worried about the fatigue failure the reason is fatigue failure results in catastrophic damage catastrophic damage very severe damage which can cause without warning that is the problem which can occur not cause which can occur without warning and can cause severe damage. So, the damage is severe it comes without warning. So, two aspects makes fatigue failure very important okay, becomes very important. Now, one can ask a question what are the physical phases or physical process? of a fatigue failure. One, there are three physical process involved in fatigue failure. One is initiation of the crack. Initiation is very important. Second is stable crack growth that is the second stage third could be unstable crack growth until rupture So, once the crack is initiated it propagates in the direction orthogonal. to the direction of oscillatory tensile stresses that is the direction of propagation of the crack once it is initiated. Now, one can ask a question why why fatigue is a challenging mode of failure. What is the problem? Why fatigue is a challenging mode of failure? Because of three reasons initiation process of fatigue is unpredictable you cannot predict this. to mapping of studies conducted on the lab scale to that of field scale is difficult. What does it mean? When you have arrived at the understanding of the fatigue failure in the lab scale. So, in the lab scale you have studied the fatigue failure on scaled models, you have understood the failure. 
but if you want to predict this to the field scale or to the real structure okay there are lot of discrepancies here lot of difficulties you cannot map the behavior of the fatigue failure on a scaled model to that of a real structure that is second serious problem where fatigue cannot be really understood as a challenging mode of failure. The third reason could be modeling the environmental process that is responsible for fatigue. because this involves comp development of complex stress states so modeling this is very difficult is very difficult it is not that simple. So, because of these three reasons fatigue mode of failure or fatigue is one of the challenging modes of failure in a given structural system. Then one can ask a question how can I control fatigue damage. Is there any method or are there any methods to control the fatigue? The moment I say fatigue, I am talking about fatigue failure. Okay. There are three ways by which you can control fatigue failure. One effective way of design material selection. and detail for construction of the structure. By doing them in an effective manner you can control fatigue failure to some extent because these can address probability of crack initiation. You can limit the crack initiation, you can limit the crack formation by effective way of design selecting the material intelligently and providing very good detailing for construction that is very important what we call as the construction drawings the detailing of connections joints should be very carefully done for example, design of welds design of bolts connections etcetera should be carefully detailed such that the probability of crack initiation can be controlled once you control the crack initiation then you can always control the fatigue failure. The second could be by regular inspection during construction and working of the structure or structural system. You have to keep on inspecting regularly even during construction and while the plant or while the structure or the while the platform is in functional operation you should keep on conducting periodic inspections that can also help you 
to control the fatigue failure to a very large extent because once you are able to understand the reasons why the crack initiation started you can always control the propagation of cracks. Okay. Thirdly, by following the repair procedures recommended by the design codes. So, here we wish to make a very clear statement that cosmetic type repair will not help in controlling the fatigue failure. You have to conduct detailed studies and identify the reasons why the fatigue failure has been initiated and that should be addressed as an engineering problem. Okay. So, there are techniques, methods, recommendations given by the design codes, international codes as well as Indian codes, where the repair should be carried out strictly as per the procedure governed by the codes. If you do that, then at least cumulative damage caused by the fatigue failure can be controlled, because you will attempt to make the repair only when the fatigue failure has been initiated otherwise you will not know that there has been a failure in the material or the member agreed. But the repair should be conducted or carried out intelligently using a very scientific procedure as advised by the design codes. So, what we can do is we can control the cumulative damage which can be resulting from the fatigue failure subsequently that can be controlled. So, there are three different and large segmental areas where or techniques where fatigue failure whether initiation or propagation can be controlled. Okay. There are different limit states as applied to marine structures which we saw in the first module. Let us quickly see where fatigue come into play here. The common limit states which are generally applied to design of marine structures are the following. You can check the strength under extreme loading that is one technique. You can also look at fatigue or you can say fatigue life So, fatigue is a process of slow crack growth under cyclic load that is what fatigue is. You can estimate a fatigue life that is one of the important check of limit states which has been done for marine structures. I will come to that point later how it is done. The third could be fracture analysis or fracture which is nothing but rapid crack growth under high amplitude loads. So, now you will understand the clear distinct difference between a fracture and a fatigue. Fatigue is essentially slow crack propagation. So, the rate of crack propagation is much lower than that of crack initiated or growing or grown by a fracture failure. 
and these cracks are generally formed under cyclic loading if they are formed under cyclic loading and start growing in a slower pace or rate we identify them as fatigue failure. If the crack growth is very rapid very fast and it happens under high amplitude loads we call them as fracture. So, as in implicitly one can understand that fatigue is generally caused by cyclic loading of low or medium amplitudes. So, here the amplitude is not the focus it is the number of cycles of the amplitude which is the focus that is what we said earlier the 10 to 20 percent is the effect of these kinds of loads on the member right. Since it is happening in a cyclic manner this will cause a failure what we call as a fatigue failure ok. Fourth could be limit state of serviceability. Generally it is deflection because if the deflection is excessively high it can result in a structural crack ok. The section can crack it can result in a structural failure. So, when you talk about limit state of serviceability essentially we focus on deflection one can also focus on crack control or crack propagation or crack width etcetera ok. So, I am not talking about that here because already we are talking about crack growth in two different segments. So, I am not focusing that here and essentially that is not the focus for marine structures. It may be a focus for let us say water retaining structures nuclear reactor vessels in terms of concrete as a material because there the crack width has got to be limited bridges etcetera ok. But in this case our focus is now addressed towards marine structures there in marine structures we do not want to have excessive deflection that is one of the case of limit state of serviceability ok. Now, the question comes what is the common practice by which these limit states are checked. The common practice to check the limit states is what we call as unity check that is a very common practice by which people check the limit states of exceedance may be strength may be fatigue may be fracture and may be serviceability what we call unity check. If you looked at unity check for strength which we all know, but still for comparison sake let us write down the unity check for strength. It says actual load or factored load. What is a factored load? Yeah you are multiplying the actual load with a specific number which comes from different combination of loads because of uncertainties in occurrence of this combination and uncertainties in the magnitude of variation of these combinations ok. Factored load divided by the acceptable load that is what we say as an unity check generally for strength. Similarly, what is the unity check for fatigue on a similar manner. The common equation available to check unity for fatigue is mth root of design life damage. mth root of design left damage where m where m slope of the SN curve. So, what we understand from the statement is 
a very common applicable unity check for fatigue life estimate in the design philosophy in marine structures is focused on S n plus. So, people now understand and deviate their attention towards understanding the fatigue life or estimating the fatigue life based on a concept called S n curves. So, one must understand what is an S n curve, what is the slope of an S n curve, what are the different formulae available for calculating the S n curve, how are they estimated and based on the S n curve how fatigue life can be judged okay, because that is one of the powerful tool which has been recommended by the engineers and international courts for estimating fatigue life which is as similar to and as serious as estimating strength check for a given design of a marine structure. So, you can understand the equivalency or similarity or seriousness of fatigue compared to strength. Just to understand that I put both these equations on the same platform make you to understand that design for strength alone is not important you must always examine your system for a fatigue life and to do that S n curve is one important tool. Okay? Now, we will talk about quickly the fatigue assessment now. Well, then we will elaborate about the S n curve. Interestingly, when a steel member is subjected to large fluctuating tensile stresses. small crack like defects are developed that is a general observation. In steel when you subject this to a large fluctuating tensile stresses you will notice that small cracks which are actually local defects will be developed. Now, let us apply this concept of observation to a machinery and to a marine structure. The similarity between these two is very simple, marine structure is also constructed of steel, machinery is also constructed of steel. When a steel member is subjected to large fluctuating tensile stresses, I will observe small cracks which will appear like defects which will get developed and then propagated. Okay? Now, when you talk about this observation on machinery, if the design is such that the stress fluctuations are similar throughout the service life of the machine. and the stress level is kept below the endurance limit. There is something called endurance limit for steel as a material if you see that the stretch fluctuations, the stress fluctuations are similar 
in nature throughout the design life or service life of the machine and if you are able to control the stress levels below the endurance limit of the material then it is safe. Now, interestingly marine structure is also constructed of steel as a material when steel is subjected to high fluctuating tensile stresses I will see development of cracks or crack like defects in small numbers or in clusters of defects. If the same material is used for manufacturing a machine I can control the stresses and check whether the stresses are levels are below the endurance limit I can declare the machine is safe from fatigue failure. But why I cannot do this in marine structure because the same concept is not applicable what concept endurance limit is not applicable to marine structure because marine structures are subjected to combination of low and high amplitude load effects or I should say stresses frequently is that clear that is a very interesting problem here. They arise essentially from environmental loads. Since the environmental loads cause low and high amplitude frequently on the material which results in a different category and range of stresses which is also cyclic I cannot apply the concept of limiting the stress to an endurance limit even though material of construction in both the cases is same. Okay. So, I must look into some other analogy wherein I can estimate my fatigue life not from endurance limit but something else okay. that is the deviation why the construction material may be same, but the analogy of understanding the fatigue failure can be different for marine structures compared to a machinery. Okay. We stop here now, we will continue this aspect of S n curve in detail and assessment of fatigue failure or fatigue life using S n curves in the next lecture. Have any questions now? Okay, thank you.